and it got to opening night, and this is the most incredible thing that I can remember about the Mikado. It was opening up in the, um, the Avon, and the place was packed. And we did the show, and we thought, oh, this is fun to do, you know? you know, people seem to be enjoying it, yeah, great. We're having fun out here, being silly and going over the top, and like, doing all these physical mannerisms based on, the image that I used in that was birds and herons, as far as the physicality for the character. That's where th I remember your arms. The I elongation the and the fingers moved. and stuff, yeah. Also, my costume, a little did I know until later on, there was a big white heron on it. So it all kind of, all things were like falling into place um, synchronistically. So opening night came. I'm sorry to go on about that, but it was such a joy being with the company. And um, we just finished the show. We said, oh, we got through that. Good. We're done. And then the lights came up. And I've never felt this before or since. The audience jumped to their feet so fast when we came out for the curtain call that it felt like we were like on an elevator on stage. It's just like this. We just, what happened there? They just went, popped up. It's like the earth had changed. And then we went off stage and said, well, I guess they really liked that show, right? <laughs> Yeah, we're like, oh, yeah, 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 I guess they did. Then we kept going come back up for curtain calls, and they kept standing. And I said, it's really going well, isn't it? <laughs> and then I thought, well, that's great. We had a great opening night. We got lucky. And then went downstairs to the showers, and all the guys and we're all in our shower stalls, and we're you know, lathering up and singing songs and laughing, and we all had individual stalls. And then suddenly, my stall was ripped open, rip, literally ripped open. And there's Richard Minette in a black tuxedo, jumps in, Gives me a kiss, throws his arms around me, and said, "That was, that, oh, that was just glorious, just glorious." And then he jumps back and he's doing it to everybody else along the line. <coughs> Excuse me. Then immediately behind him in another suit is Nikki Pennell, and Nikki is not the most verbose, <coughs> most verbose person in the world. He jumps in like it's it's just they're getting drenched, <laughs> hugging us. And I said, "Well, I guess it went better than we thought," you know. And after that, the show just took off. We did it for three years. We traveled all over Canada. The CBC did a version. We traveled all over the States. We ended up in New York, and I stayed in New York for three years because of that. We went to the old Vic in England. Even to this day, people remember the show. And we did not realize the effect that that show would have. It just came out of nowhere. It's just like another show you're going to do at Stratford. Right. But it took off. But what's interesting <coughs> is that it sounds as if none of you from design or Ryan McDonald or performers were aware of this incredible piece of magic that was assembling. Absolutely. And yet you were all seasoned professionals who know what you're doing. Is, so we're talking about happenstance and fate in, 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 in the art as well. Yeah. But it's, it's hard to be known as Poobah. <laughs> 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 but I'm sorry, it is. It's the happenstance, the luck, the talent, the, the concentration of a specific talent for a specific show was yeah. rare. It was very rare. We didn't realize it. We did later on. I mean, I, I, my heart breaks now to know that I think at least a third of that company is gone now. Wow. And it was during, you know, the major AIDS em epidemic. Oh, my God. And Eric has passed away. And Eric was brilliant. Oh, he was, yeah. he had a subtlety to his character and a, f a fun to the character and a control. 